Fallout Equestria the Chrysalis, Chapter 13, Part 3 The short trip through Dodge City was not as tense or frantic as I had expected. In fact, it was remarkably placid. Starlight guided Dusty through the maze of streets and ruins, with the occasional backtrack with her pit buck warned of radiation. There were a few patches of particularly rough ground where the going was difficult, but the numerous healing potions Sickle had taken had worked their magic, and she took over the duty of pulling, easily muscling through the rougher spots. Despite that, it was an eerie place. Even though the city was in ruins, it seemed wrong to me that it was so quiet. I've been to Dodge City a few times. It was the only real city in that region of Equestria, and while it wasn't a, like a teeming metropolis like some cities in the heart of Equestria, it still had been quite a bustling place. Now, it was reduced to an empty shell, a silent grave for all the ponies who had lived there, and another vivid reminder to me of how much the world had changed. My downcast mood started to break around the same time as we reached the edge of the city, and started out into the barren land beyond. I allowed for a few hours of feeling sorry for myself, perhaps even venting some of the feelings I had been holding back those two weeks. Now, it was time to focus. So I just sat quietly in the wagon, trying to figure out what to do next, as we just continued on into the evening. It was getting dark when Dusty finally called a halt, many miles away from Dodge City. The rugged terrain had slowed our progress, but it made it easy to find a fairly safe place to camp. Sickle pulled the wagon into a narrow draw, and I wearily hopped down. A quiet lingered over our group as we set about feeding ourselves. I got a can of beans, which I ate without enthusiasm. I was only about halfway through it when Starlight's curiosity finally led her to break the silence. So, do you even need to eat, even though you feed on... love? I was surprised that it had taken so long for the subject to be brought up again. The topic had been thoroughly sidetracked by more pressing matters, but I had known that it was only delaying the inevitable. I was simply surprised at how long the delay had been. Yes, I said plainly. I had spent enough of the day moping, and it was just time to be clear and open. I have similar nutritional needs as a pony, especially when I'm in the form of one. The need for magic is separate from that, though. Magic is required for several biological functions, especially mental processes. Without it, a changeling rapidly degenerates and... dies. Starlight frowned, looking over me before asking. Degenerates how? I swallowed another mouthful of beans before answering. It affects a lot of things, but it hits the nervous system hardest. Early stages of magic starvation include headaches, difficulty focusing, and confusion, as well as physical weakness and a loss of coordination. Once the final bits of magic are used up, it progressively and rapidly goes into severe dementia, paralysis, and organ failure. The whole process from magic depletion to brain death is less than half an hour. She had blanched, staring at me. After a moment, she blinked, shaking her head. That sounds... Horrible. Then a questioning, perhaps even suspicious look crossed her face. You sound awfully calm about it, too. I've been living with it my whole life. I said, shrugging. For me, it's just one more on the long list of things I need to live. Food, water, air, livable temperature, etc., etc. And magic. Sickle snickered, helpfully adding. Booze, chem, sex. Starlet ignored her. Yeah, except you take magic from ponies, that's... that's a bit different. Tossing her can aside, Sickle grabbed another. Hey, didn't we take this food from other ponies? I ignored Sickle as well, even though I was a little bit impressed by her insight. Yes, I have to get magic from ponies. That's the part that causes problems. I bet. Starlight muttered, and focused onto her food for a minute, as if taking her anger out on the poor can of pickled beets. Eventually, she spoke up again. So, if you've been feeding on me this whole time, how the hell does that even work? And what the hell does that make us to you? P pray? I stiffened, ear shooting up. My reply was sharp and simple. No. Dusty looked up from his own food, quirking an eyebrow at me. You got awful defensive there. I gave him a firm stare. You could call it a cultural issue. I said, and he stared right back. Well... Why don't you explain it, then? I held his gaze for a few seconds before turning away with a snort. There are... 
were... Uh, whatever. Some changelings who saw ponies that way, but their views were... antithetical to my hives. Uh-huh, Dusty said. And why the difference? History, I said. <sighs> Boring... Sickle said, jamming a leg-mounted blade into her unmarked can in a crude attempt to open it. I continued to just ignore her. It used to be that most changelings felt that way. Back then, changelings were all united in a single hive. I snorted. Ruled by the great Queen Chrysalis. I said, lacing my words with every ounce of sarcasm and disdain I could muster. She led our people against Equestria time and time again, trying to enslave every pony so she would have a huge source of magical power. When tension started rising between ponies and zebras, she helped promote it, hoping to weaken Equestria enough that she could prevail. Eventually, Equestria had enough. They sent one of their newly equipped armies south, hoping to force Chrysalis to stop her raids, or maybe even capture her. Of course, she fought back, led the army even, and I don't think she appreciated just how much had changed. She was very distinctive, and I suspect every soldier there wanted to be the hero that ended her threat. Enough fire battered her defenses that a single bullet got through, striking her into the chest. That was enough to bring down the Great Queen. Lots of changelings died, fighting for her. Some were captured, some were taken prisoner. They were treated well enough, I suppose, but that didn't prevent most of them escaping. Most of the survivors, though, they scattered. They formed new hives, some clung onto Chrysalis's ideas, others recognized them as misguided. My hive was one of the latter. We recognized that we needed ponies to live, but that didn't have to lead to hostility. We sought a safer and more beneficial relationship. We still had a feed on ponies, but we sought to help and protect them too. We made friends, helped ponies who needed it, that sort of thing. It wasn't really a perfect coexistence, but it was a decent arrangement, and one far less likely to provoke retribution. How generous of you, Starlight murmured before getting another mouthful of food. It was a very practical arrangement, I replied. And for those of us who grew up having never seen ponies as prey, it was also easier on the conscience. Starlight scowled, though her expression had faded by the time she finished chewing and swallowing her last bite. And how does- Oh, fuck yeah! Sickle suddenly bellowed. Pineapple! We all looked over her to see her grinning over the mangled but open can. Her grin slipped away as she noticed the attention. What? Fuck off, this can's mine, get your own! She tilted back to the can to get at its contents, and we ignored her once more. Um, anyway... Starlight said, pointedly looking at Sickle before turning back to me. So, how does this whole feeding thing work anyway? I sighed, knowing that this was a particularly tricky subject. So, emotions are closely intertwined with magic. Ponies used that to celebrate that uh, back before the war, but it slowly faded away. I shook my head. Um, anyway, when a pony feels strong emotions, some of their magic gets mixed up into it. A changeling can pull those emotions out to feed on them, but it's extremely obvious and rather unpleasant. If the pony is feeling love for someone or something, it makes things much easier. If a changeling is near enough to that love, or better yet, is the recipient of it, we can feed on it and extract some of that magic. She scowled. What I mean is, what the hell has that been doing to me? Nothing significant or lasting, I assured her. Obviously, any magic I drain from a pony isn't there for them to use, but most ponies generate magic faster than a changeling needs to burn through it to survive. I've been as restrained as possible, and I've also only had fairly mild emotions. Friendly affection works on feeding, but it doesn't carry much magic. I've barely gotten enough to get by, but it means that you shouldn't notice any difference at all. She muttered around another beat. Doesn't make it any better just because I don't know about it. She then swallowed and spoke again. So, what happens to a pony if you do eat more? For the most part, it would seem like as if they spent the magic themselves. They'd simply have less magical reserves. I hesitated before continuing further. If drained excessively, the pony would start developing more notable symptoms. Heavy depletion leads to emotional suppression, where all emotions become increasingly muted. 
the pony would start getting headaches, an increasing sense of fatigue, and their natural magic weakens. Starlight's eyes darted back and forth as she thought. I sighed, my ears drooping, and spoke up before her train of thought brought her to where I could see it going. And yes, you felt those symptoms before. Her eyes focused on me as I continued quietly. It was after the raiders ambushed us. I was in bad shape, and it was less than 24 hours since I'd woken up from centuries of inactivity. If not for my magic and the ability to shapeshift, I don't think I could have walked. My body, my natural body, was atrophied, and I was burning through magic just to keep going. I was already suffering borderline magical exhaustion, and I'd pushed my body to the breaking point. I needed a lot of that magic right then, or... Or I would have probably been dead by the time you woke up. I'm sorry. She stared at me for several seconds before huffing and turning back to her food. Sorry? Sorry, huh? Why? I'm just like heir to you, right? I winced. No, Starlight, I am sorry. I had to feed on you or else I would have died, but I didn't want to hurt you. I don't want to hurt any pony, especially not one I consider my friend. Her expression softened slightly, though she remained focused onto her food. It was a minute before she replied. Friends don't do stuff like that to their friends. I know, I know, I said. That's why I'm sorry. She cast a glance my way. Her eyes lingered on for a moment before drifting back over to her food, and she sighed. She didn't say anything else. When it was obvious that our conversation wasn't continuing, Dusty chimed in. So, new rule. No feeding on us. I frowned at him. Well, you might as well tell me that I can't drink anything. That would kill me just about as quickly. I'm sure that you'll find a way. Dusty, I would be lucky to last two days, and that's with minimal physical exertion and no more magic use than simply maintaining my form. He shrugged, though, from his frown, I got the impression that he wasn't completely dismissing what I said. Then, why don't you just drop the whole shape-shifting thing? We all saw what you look like. That might get me a couple of hours, if that. I said. Unless I need to disguise myself again, at which point I'll run out even quicker. It takes a lot to assume a form than it does to maintain it, and I don't intend to let any pony else know what I am. You three are the only exception to that. Sickle spoke up again. Eh, I don't mind those pussies just because they're all creeped up by the whole bug monster brain feeding shit. She rose from her sitting position just to shift around, sprawling back against the side of the wagon so she could separate her legs in a familiarly lewd manner. An armored hoof padded at her crotch. I've got all the lovin' you can eat right here. I fixed her with my best flat glare. That, that's not how it works. I said, and I looked away. But, a moment later, my glare faded away as my emotional reaction relented to more practical considerations. Are you proposing a trade? Sickle's armored head tilted, and she frowned. What? Are you proposing a trade? I repeated. Sex for food. Starlight finally looked up from her food and gave me a shocked look. Seriously? I didn't quite meet her gaze. I have fairly limited options at this point. Sickle growled. I'm proposing sex because it's fun, you dumb cunt! She snorted, tipping back the can to slurp down some more pineapple chunks, and then immediately started talking with her mouthful. Ain't like I even give a shit or a flying fuck if you suck a bit of magic or whatever the fuck you do, so long as it doesn't bother me none. Either way. She finished off the can and tossed it aside. If you can find any love in there, you're welcome to it. I frowned, finding that line rather concerning, but eventually I nodded. In that case, I'll have to decline the offer of sex, but thank you. Starlight kept watching me out of the corner of her eye as I finished up my can. I looked to meet her eyes, but she looked away, and I returned to my meal. Soon, she was watching me again. I pretended not to notice. It wasn't long before our meal was done and we prepared to sleep. I was just settling onto my bedroll and pulling my blanket over to me when Dusty approached Sickle about standing watch. You're gonna have to step up and actually take shift tonight since Whisper's out. Fuck that. Sickle rumbled, stretching out with faint clicking and clanking of her armor. She rolled onto her side, facing away from him. 
She can watch just like she always has. Look, with any luck, we'll get all of this sorted out tomorrow, so it'll just be one night. Until then, she's not carrying a gun, and that means she's not standing watch. Sickle draped a foreleg across her face, muffling her voice. Hey, I don't carry a gun either. Guess I can't stand watch either. You know what I mean. Yeah, well, what you mean is fucking stupid. Sickle replied, then lifted her hoof again to look at him. She just murdered like 40 fucking mercs. I quickly interjected. That... that wasn't that many. Oh, really? Sickle said, rolling over to look at me. So, just how many ponies do you think you killed today? I glared at her for a couple of seconds before finally relenting with a sigh. Probably... somewhere between 20 and 30? 20 or 30, Sickle repeated. And they weren't a bunch of dumbass raiders either. These fuckers were all well-armed mercs and fancy-ass rangers. She rolled over once again, once more draping her foreleg across her face. But yeah, I'm sure the only reason she ain't fucked you up yet is because you said that she can't have a gun. Dusty looked between the two of us as if uncertain which one was more deserving of his disapproving glare. I simply muttered. I don't think you're helping, Sickle. Who said shit about helping? She replied. Finally, Dusty sighed, shaking his head. You're really not gonna pitch in, are you? Fuck off, Sickle muttered. I'm sleeping. It was still several long seconds before Dusty finally turned away. Fine. Star and I will make do. Sickle muttered something under her breath, but didn't stir. Myself, I simply pulled up my blanket a bit more and closed my eyes. A hoof thumped firmly against my back, stirring me. I don't think I'd even had enough time to drift off to sleep, and I opened my eyes, looking back over my shoulder. I saw Starlight standing over me, and her expression was tight and wary, and she spoke as soon as I looked up to her. Were you really going to make that deal with Sickle? I sighed, laying my head down again. I'm an infiltrator, I said, my voice quiet. That means that sometimes I have to do things that I'd rather not. If that's what I had to do survive, then yeah, I would. I could tell from her silence that she wasn't comfortable with the idea. It took a minute before she replied. Yeah, look, I'm not happy with all of this shit, but I don't want to make you starve to death just because you are a colossal ass. So, if it starts to get to that point, then I'll help you. I looked up to her again. I could have pointed out how it would be a little more complicated than that when there was no affection present, but I didn't. I simply just gave a weak smile. Thanks. Only if necessary, she quickly added. If I start getting random headaches, I'm kicking your ass, okay? My smile grew a little bit more along with a soft chuckle. <sighs> okay, alright. Okay, she echoed. I thought I might have caught a tiny hint of a smile, and then she gestured with a hoof. Now get back to sleep. I laid my head down again as she walked off, feeling as if a tiny bit of hope had returned. <laughs>